I'm Amy Wilde. I'm about to drive to Broome. Once I get there, I'm going to go catch some crocodiles as a volunteer in the Kimberley. Words can't express how excited I am. I am going to be on my own though, so apologies for any not so great filming. But you know, we do what we can. Cars all ready? Sure is pretty amazing how much stuff you can fit in one itty bitty car. Anyway, let's hit the road. Apologies for my sounding a bit flat back there and of course my terrible rusty voice. Naturally I fell sick the day before leaving, but oh well, I'm out on the road now and that's all that matters. How amazing is this? Ah, oh, this is the absolute essence of freedom as far as I'm concerned. You can never afford to plan your schedule too tightly out here. Getting stuck behind a couple of these in a day's drive can set you back hours. This is the road to Coral Bay and Exmouth. Less than 200 k's to go, woo! What a stunning landscape it is, hey? I'm so, so excited to get into the ocean and to see the coral of the Ningaloo once again. It has been way too long. Such a stunning drive. Oh, what was that on the side of the road? It looked like a thorny devil. Let's see. Yes, that which I was most hoping for. I have found him, the thorny devil, one of Australia's most fascinating little lizards. I am so happy. I tell you what, I thought this guy was dead when I first saw him, but it turns out he's just really sleepy. He's fast asleep, the little guy. Now let me show you a little something cool about them. These guys are so special. Look at these amazing thorns. Now you might expect this is just a fancy defense mechanism. I mean, no one's gonna wanna pick this guy up all spiky, but there's more to it than that. Let me give him a drink. So to give him this drink, I'm going to pour some water on the ground and then I'm going to stand him up in it. Give him a bit more water. Now check this out. So what you're seeing here is an amazing phenomenon. The individual scales, thorns and tubercles on the skin of this lizard are actually arranged so that the spaces between them form a network of tiny, narrow canals. This means that when the thorny devil stands in a puddle, the water is drawn up through these canals by what's called capillary action, which is the same method plants use to suck up water. This network of canals then draws the water all the way to the corner of the devil's mouth. How incredible is that? Otherwise, if I actually pour the water on top of him, the same thing happens. So obviously in nature this would be rain. And the thorns will actually channel that water very carefully all the way into the corner of his mouth. What's up? <laughs> The other cool thing about these lizards is their diet. They're actually incredibly specialised. What do they eat? They eat ants. That's it. That's all. Little tiny ants. So when they're not sleeping, like this guy is right now, or drinking, they're doing their funny little wobble walk across the desert, licking up those little ants with their sticky tongue. Awesome stuff. He might not look so camouflaged up close, but I tell you what, when you put him down with the red dirt and the sticks... Oh, there he is. He kind of looks a bit like both put together, doesn't he? Look at that adorable face. I think the Latin name for them is so wrong. Moloch Horridus literally means horrid devil. So adorable. Don't know what they were thinking. Well, I'd better leave him be. I've taken him off the side of the road so he's not going to become actual roadkill even though he looked like it for a minute there. I've given him some water, put him somewhere safe. I'd better get my bum moving and make it to Exmouth. The shadows are growing long and I don't want to be driving in the dark or I'll hit kangaroos. Alright little guy, bye bye, let's go. I freaking love this road, I freaking love this country. Can you see all the termite mounds? Silly emus, lucky the car's slowing down for you. Look at that, so adorable, such a shame they're so foolish sometimes. These guys are notorious for chasing cars and then cutting in front of them. Oh but look at the little babies, they're pretty new hatchlings and look that one got left behind, he's joined up again. 
Wow. Awesome emus. All right, I've got to keep going. It's getting late. All right, so it's day two for me. I've made it to X Mouth. So, so far I've been able to show you that beautiful thorny devil and the incredible emu with the babies. Out of interest, that was probably the dad. They're actually the ones that take care of the eggs and I believe the babies too. Pretty amazing, hey? I reckon humanity should follow suit. Anyway, that's a side note. The point I wanted to make was that while those are the two things that I've actually been able to show you, in reality I found so much more, particularly in the way of reptiles. I found bobtails, monitors, also known as goannas, dragon lizards, including the central netted dragon, Tenophorus nucalis, absolutely stunning. I almost got him, he was just a bit too quick for me. Obviously the thorny devil, snakes, all kinds. And sadly, definitely not all of those were alive. Basically the point I'm trying to make is watch where you're going when you drive. This doesn't just apply to out here in the wilderness. I've found snakes and lizards and frogs, all kinds, in the middle of the city on the roads at night. So please, just watch where you're going. I'm not asking you to swerve your car and crash. Just take your foot off the acceleration. Maybe, you know, tap the brakes ever so slightly. Could even deviate from your path ever so gently. Just those small things can save the lives of so many different animals. And of course, the number one thing is watching where you're going. Be alert, be aware that these animals are there on the road trying to get a bit of heat at the end of the day. Anyway, that's my little rant over. Apparently there's a gorge this way. Let's go check it out. And if you look the other way, more amazing. Here's a little Kalia Munda, the striped rainbow skink. Isn't he pretty? There are some other species of this genus that really are rainbow-like. They strike rainbows off their scales, amazing. And here I found a Tenotus saxatilis, the rock Tenotus. Now this guy is actually part of the largest genus of lizards in Australia. That's insane. These guys live in rocks primarily and also river floodplains. So right here is the perfect sort of habitat for him to eat all of the different kinds of insects he does. Always scanning for the black flanked rock wallaby. Yes, here they are. The black footed or the black flanked rock wallaby. Can you see them? They're sneaky. Top left and bottom right. Just chilling out. What an absolute cutie, having a good old fashioned face bath. These guys are considered under threat of extinction after the advent of foxes. Their distribution has declined drastically. They're considered vulnerable. Look at him showing off that amazing black flank. Here he goes. The other fella's not fussed. Look at him, lounge lizard. How's that for a yoga pose? Now these guys usually come out at night time, but because the weather's so good today, they're out sunbaking. Whoa, what was that? It's not a wallaby, this one is a wobbly. <laughs> Amazing. Now what's he doing here? Oh wow. My best guess is that he's found a bit of salt left on the rock and he's having a lick of that. Salt is a very precious commodity out in the bush when you're an animal. Delicious stuff. Wow. Another really cool thing about these guys is their feet. The soles of their feet are really rough, kind of like the tread of your hiking shoes or my bare feet. This helps them jump along the rocks with incredible agility, helping them keep away from those nasty cats and foxes. Here's one of those beautiful central netter dragons I was talking about. In the middle of a national park, people still can't watch where they're going, just of course. Yes, 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 can you see these guys? These are Australian bustards. Amazing birds. Let's see if we can get closer. Give me one second. Look at them, such amazing birds. Oh, is that a display there? The one on the right, what's that? How exciting. Ooh, I got a bit too close. There he goes. With light like this, who could resist showing you these? Ooh, pop, 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 pop. 
farm. It's dirt desert pea. There are two main types of this flower. This one, which has the red center, so those darker bits. And the more famous one has the black. So instead of darker red, it's just got black in there. Absolutely stunning. If you've seen any postcards from Australia, there's a very high chance these feature in it. They're amazing. Look at them, loving the evening. So these guys are Euros, a type of wallaroo, which is somewhere between a wallaby and a kangaroo. However, just like their kangaroo cousins, these guys are terrible to drive with at night and in the evenings. So right about now. They'll jump in front of you, they have no road sets whatsoever. So if you're ever in this situation, get off the road when you can. Well, I've decided to go out on a little bit of a night expedition, doing some herping, going to see what sort of reptiles and whoever knows what else I can find out here. Oh, what was that? Oh, what is he? Oh yes, it's a gecko, it's a stroph, it's a strophorus. Yes, yes, yes. Now, can you see this guy? This, I believe, is Strophorus ciliaris. This is a type of spiny tail gecko. You can see his funny little tail here. Now, this is actually a really unusual type of tail. This species will usually have two rows of spines running along his tail. So, he must have dropped it, or he might be a bit of a strange variant. Look at those eyes. This guy is incredible. Here's a closer look at that strange tail. Wowee. Look at those eyes. These are one of the most distinguishing features of the species, including the little spines just on top of them, if you can see that. Something else that I'm not going to try to show you today is actually the colour of the inside of his mouth, which is yellow to orange. In this case, bright yellow. He's already tried to bite me. Oh, there's a little lick. Did you see that? These guys have very variable colour. This guy's got a pretty cool patterning on his back, which is quite pretty for this species. And we're also really lucky to see this particular member of the species because he's in a very isolated population right on the tip where Exmouth is. Other than that, the rest of the population live all through central and northern Australia. Look at him, he thinks my hand is a branch. Oh, wow. Yes, and can you see this one? Another one! I can't believe it! I must have got my eye in. What a freaking amazing, stunning thing. And here we go, this one's showing the more typical tail that I was talking about. So this is what his tail should look like. Two clear rows of spines down his tail. They're very soft. They only look like spines, they're not actually spiky. Oh my goodness. What an amazing, amazing lizard this is. Check out that patterning. How is this? How just stunning an animal is this? I can't believe it. Oh, there's a jump. All right, I'll put him back. Yes, I am so happy. That was only a short bit of spotlighting, but we still got those two Strophorus ciliaris, the spiny tail geckos. How freaking stunning are they? You don't get much better than that. And by the way, I also got a little mammal. I think it could have been a donut, but I didn't get the best look at it. I saw a third gecko that I didn't get to in time and a rabbit, unfortunately, as well, of course, as infinite euros all over the place. Anyway, it's bedtime for me. I've got to be up early. See you soon. Well, back on the road after Exmouth. Next stop, Karatha.